This was a young male, somebody who could get into the house and get out in that neighborhood without being seen. No one who knew the victim or victims knew the layout of the house, uh, knew how to get entry into the house. There was no indication of a forced entry. No. I don't think it was two people because the more people you have going into that house, the more likely that it is that they were going to be seen. So I think it's one male young enough to have been in that neighborhood. Um, he had to be somewhat confident that... Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies starts Oh my gosh, you guys. Now. Well, we need to talk about Jack D and the white car. Law enforcement said they ruled out the ex-boyfriend, but they didn't say which ex-boyfriend, did they? Because Maddie also had an ex-boyfriend. However, I do not think he has anything to do with this. The search for this white vehicle is very, very interesting. And I want to share with you why. I don't think this was a stalker. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. I also don't think this was an SK Ted Bundy type of situation either because there was no SA involved. So my feeling is I don't see why a stalker would feel the need to break into 11 Two two King Road, a house that had six able-bodied young adults living in there if he was just trying to target one person. At least it wouldn't be someone who was random. Whoever did this knew who slept where and knew the layout of the house and possibly knew the key code unless the ladder was used to access that second floor. And I'm going to talk about that more in just a second. I want to revisit Kaylee's dad's response to Jack D at the memorial that they held for Kaylee, because I think his body language is very telling. A lot of people are probably aware that Jack Decor allegedly lives less than a 30 second walk away from 1122 King Road. We know that Kaylee was moving to Texas and we know she was going to Texas without Jack. We also know there was a potential custody issue over the dog Murphy. We know Kaylee had Murphy and we know that Murphy did not alert that night. So whoever accessed the home either used the main patio door on the second floor, knew the key code or used a ladder to get into the third floor. I think they knew the key code and I'm going to share my theory of what happened that night in just a moment. So please stay with me. Everything I'm sharing with you today is my opinion and opinions are not facts. So please don't send any negativity to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Let's be kind and good to each other. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video and upload and give me a thumbs up so I know you were here. And I want to emphasize that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. However, if anyone would have been considered a person of interest and would have had a motive, it would have been Jack. Hear me out. So Jack D and Kaylee had been together for somewhere between five and six years, depending on who you're hearing the story from. So let's just say between five and six years, we know that they had recently broken up and we know that the most dangerous time for a woman is when she's trying to leave. Jack's alibi, and I've heard two different alibis given for him and I don't know which is which because law enforcement isn't telling us, but in one alibi, he's supposedly at home with the roommate. Now Jack D lived only 30, a 30 second walk away from where Kaylee was living at 1122 King Road. So the other alibi that I'm hearing is that Jack was away in Boise, Idaho, which I looked on Google maps. It's about five and a half hours away. Now this could explain why his cell phone was turned off. Hear me out. All right. So here's the house where Jack allegedly lives. Even if he was in his bedroom, like his roommate claims, he could easily have gotten out the window eased himself down over the garage and lowered himself to the ground. 
He would just need to walk about 30 seconds to access Kaylee's house and he would be able to do this by going through the woods located behind the house. He would be able to enter and exit without being seen by neighbors because of the woods and he is one of the few people that knew Murphy the dog and this would explain why Murphy did not alert. Now Kaylee's parents are saying that they're behind Jack because he quote couldn't have done this but what they're not saying is just as interesting as what they are saying but let me just say that they are not saying he has a rock solid alibi. Now listen to this statement by Christy who is Kaylee's mom and tell me what you hear. Christy said, they're wasting their time with Jack. Jack is as distraught as we are. Jack is our family. Jack is 1000%, 2000% our family. Jack is with us and we stand behind him 100%. We are supporting him and we know in our hearts and our minds and our souls and the depths of our souls, Jack is hurting. Kaylee and Jack would have eventually been married. They would have eventually been married. They would have had kids. We love Jack, absolutely love Jack. We stand behind Jack 1000%. Did you catch it? Let's look at the statement again. They're wasting their time with Jack. This statement by Christie tells us that law enforcement was either trying to rule Jack Decor in or rule him out. And law enforcement is saying that the food truck guy was cleared. And law enforcement has said that the ex-boyfriend was cleared. Now they didn't say which ex-boyfriend. They didn't say it was Maddie's ex-boyfriend, right? They didn't say whose ex-boyfriend was cleared. They just said the ex-boyfriend was cleared. Now they don't have to tell us everything. They don't even have to tell us the truth. They are allowed to protect the integrity of their investigation or to elicit information in their investigation. But I don't see anything that law enforcement tells us that Jack Decor was cleared. And I think this white car is critical. I don't think this was a random stalker because a stalker wanting to go after his target would most likely not select a house with six able-bodied young adults living there. He would have no way to know if someone had a gun or a phone to call 911. If a stalker had one single victim picked out, then why not choose a time when the victim is either home alone or somewhere alone? Wouldn't this make the victim an easier target? So it's really odd that this random stalker would choose a house with six able-bodied people and there was a male staying in the house and the, uh, the layout of this house was unusual. It, it's weird. It's not a normal layout because there was this addition done on the second and third floor of the house. So whoever did this knew the layout of the house. And we know from the coroner that one person was not sleeping. So in my opinion, this person woke up and heard a commotion. Now, did he use a ladder and go in through the upstairs balcony? Or did he come in through the ground floor, knew the key code, made his way past the roommates who had their doors closed and they were sleeping, went up to the second floor, crept up to the third floor, found his target, and she was sleeping in someone else's room, right? Because we know Maddie and Kaylee were together. And on the way down encountered Ethan or Zana because in the act of doing away with Kaylee and Maddie, they, we know now that there were defensive wounds. So they did fight back. So in my opinion, this person had to do away with Ethan and Zana because they recognized him. I just want to point out that Murphy the dog, who belonged to Kaylee and Jack, did not alert. And who has Murphy now? Jack does. And again, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. So I'm not saying he did anything. I am just speculating here. So let's take a look at some of the things we have learned about Jack. First of all, he followed Kaylee on Instagram, but she did not follow him. Why? Was he upset that Kaylee was leaving for Texas without him? She could have gone right after this happened. Was he upset that she was moving to Texas and taking Murphy? Was he enraged? Now let's look at that food truck video again for a second. 
The food truck guy in the background looks a lot like John Jack Showalter. However, do you think this also could be Jack D? Jack D also likes to wear a hoodie. Jack D is around the same height and whoever this guy is, he was not there to buy food. He just appears to be lurking in the background and when Kaylee and Maddie leave, he left too. Now everyone is innocent until proven guilty and no one has been charged. So why were Kaylee and Maddie calling him 10 times? I can understand Kaylee calling him, but why was Maddie calling him too? Was there an incident at the food truck or was someone lurking around outside the house and she thought she recognized him? Again, if he accessed the house using the key code, then he had to have had access to that code and there is no sign of a break-in. I pointed out the ladder and the fact that it was never taken in for DNA evidence. So is this because law enforcement already have some idea of who accessed the house because different key codes are used for different people? Did police know that the ladder was not used because they are confident of the way this person entered 1122 King Road? I want to share my theory with you guys. I don't think Ethan or Zana were the target that night. I think this person knew the layout of the house. I don't think that this was an SK random act again, because this person knew the layout of the house and certainly could have gotten to the other two roommates on the ground floor. And again, it would be so risky to do this with multiple able-bodied young adults in that home. This narrows the list down to someone who was after Kaylee or Maddie. We've heard from Kaylee's family about what happened to her because what happened to Kaylee was so much worse. And if this is true, then it does appear that she was probably the target. Now I suspect that someone, either Ethan or maybe it was Anna, heard a noise, woke up and it brought them out of their room. And this is why they were done away with and then the perpetrator went upstairs looking for the target now it could also be the reverse and what i mean is that the perpetrator could have entered the house and gone straight to the third floor to get the target now there were two girls sleeping in that room not one so that could have been a surprise there could have been more noise because we know there were defensive wounds and as this perpetrator tried to exit Maybe Ethan or Zana were standing there. They recognized him and he had to do away with them in his view. Now law enforcement should have a pretty good idea of who they think was done away with first, who was second, who was third, and who was fourth. We don't know that yet, but we do know that they're looking for this white Hyundai Elantra. We know that they're picking up footage and so I don't know if this is Jack standing on the roof or not of what is believed to be Jack's house. But the reason this is circulating is we can all see one, how easy it is to go from the second floor down the garage to the ground floor. And we can also see that there is a white car parked in this photograph, a series of calls from Kaylee and Maddie to Jack. That is an eyebrow razor. And I've heard a lot of people say, well, Jack couldn't have done this. He looks so scrawny. Listen, Jack plays tennis. His right arm would have been strong from hitting that tennis ball over and over. And he is tall in comparison to Kaylee. Look how small she is compared to him. Why did she call him six times between 2.26 a.m. and 2.34 a.m.? Then Maddie calls Jack three times between 2.44 a.m. and 2.52 a.m. And then Kaylee makes one final call to Jack at 2.52 a.m. And the source for that information is Kaylee's sister, Olivia. So those phone calls certainly do raise a lot of red flags because if you're considering what was going on leading up to what happened, Law enforcement has to be considering, and we have to also consider those 10 phone calls. Why were Maddie and Kaylee calling Jack 10 times? Was it normal for him to sleep with his phone off? Was this a pattern 
and law enforcement can establish that. Were there any texts that were sent during that time between Kaylee and Maddie that would give us any clues or voice messages that were left that would give law enforcement any clues as to what they were calling and texting about? Subscribe.